G'day guys, Tyler here. Welcome back to the Mets Lab as we continue to go through the key knowledge for Unit 3 Area of Study 2. Today we're going to talk about three terms that you really need to know. Oxygen deficit, steady state, and then EPOC, which you may also see as oxygen debt. So we're just going to go through the definitions, look at a, a graph that we should be very familiar with, and then look at a couple of applications of that in a couple of different sporting scenarios. All right, the term oxygen deficit. Simply, it means that the oxygen supply does not meet oxygen demand. Um, so, boys, we'll leave it there for now. The other, so, steady state. Steady state would then refer to oxygen supply meeting demand. Um, our body needs a certain amount of oxygen to do to do the work it's doing, and at the moment, it's getting the right amount. That's good. And then the last term, EPOC, or oxygen debt. EPOC stands for excess post exercise oxygen consumption. Essentially what that means is that the amount of oxygen we're supplying to our body at this time is more than what it would need to produce energy, uh, but we do need that oxygen for other reasons. So we'll come over here to this graph, which you, you should, you've probably seen before. We need to be quite familiar with it. It was on last year's exam with, a, I think it was three multiple choice questions directly associated with it. What we're looking at, the red line, if you see that red line there, that's going to indicate the oxygen demand of the body. So right down here, while the red line's really low, that's basically at rest. The blue line is going to indicate how much oxygen supply we currently have. So while that blue line and that red line are together, it means we're in a steady state. Our oxygen supply, the blue, is matching the red, the demand. Um, that is a good thing. So what this would show is rest here. All of a sudden, the oxygen demand has gone up from resting levels to up here. That means we've started doing exercise. We've started running, we've started riding, we've started doing something. And straight away, that demand for oxygen goes up because we want to use our aerobic energy system, which we've spoken about earlier, to get that energy. So we need oxygen for that. Now, this blue line here, as soon as we start exercising, it starts to come up. That's the oxygen supply, VO2, if you will. We spoke about it last week. So that's our ventilation, our heart rate, the ability to get the oxygen into our body, around our body, into the muscles. Now, as you can see, it's taken a period of time for that oxygen supply line to catch up to that oxygen demand line. So for this first period, we are, that is our oxygen deficit. The demand isn't meeting, sorry, the supply isn't meeting the demand. During this oxygen deficit, we're gonna be seeing increased contributions from our anaerobic systems to help us meet the energy, despite the fact that um, the, uh, the oxygen supply is not there. Here we've reached a steady state. That's good. There's that oxygen supply meeting the demand for the rest of this. This might be a, a, a five kilometer run, probably a bit shorter. Maybe, let's say, maybe a one kilometer run. We just run at a steady pace. We go through a deficit when we increase the intensity. We have a steady state. And then this is now the end of the activity. As soon as we stop working, that oxygen demand has gone all the way back to resting levels in terms of our movement. So we don't need high oxygen for our energy because we've just stopped. So the demand, we're back at resting levels. We can see though the supply, it doesn't just drop straight back down. The supply is staying up. That is EPOC. We have excess post-exercise, so after exercise, oxygen consumption. Despite this low demand, our supply is still up because our body's gonna use that to metabolize the byproducts we've had. Basically, this EPOC is gonna match whatever deficit we've had at the start. We need to pay that back. When we look at a few different sporting situations, so we'll come over to this side. We've got two examples here. This first graph, this is a, a beat test, let's say, or a VO2 max test, a step test, where we increase the intensity, we hold that for a little while, then we make it harder. It could be like a beat test. So here's our rest, steady state at rest, supply meeting demand. We start the beat test, we go to level one. All of a sudden the supply goes up. It takes some time for that, uh, sorry, the demand went straight up. It took some time for some, the supply to catch up. So we have a deficit, then a steady state. If we then increase the intensity again, we are going to go through another deficit. So end of stage one of the beat test, we go to stage two. The demand instantly goes up because we now have increased the workload. It means we're going to go through another deficit while we take the time for those acute responses, which we'll talk about later. Uh, ventilation, heart rate, they need to come up. We need to increase oxygen supply around the body. Another steady state. If we increase intensity again, we go through deficit again. So anytime we increase the intensity, we're going to go through a deficit for a little while until we get back to that steady state. And then we're going to have this EPOC at the end. If we drop out of the beep test here, we sit down, that demand goes down, the supply stays up to clear out those byproducts. All of these deficits, the bigger the deficit, the more deficits we have, the bigger that EPOC's going to be. 
Now, in the most complex sort of setting that we could talk about, this is going to be an intermittent sport, a team sport, where we're going to have periods of, of low intensity, periods of very high intensity, periods of, of rest if we're sitting on the bench. We're going to be in all sorts. So, we started again just so we use it. This is our rest. Oxygen supply, really low. Oxygen demand, really low. We're at that steady state. Um, this might be... Maybe we're just we're, we're playing AFL and we're starting on the wing, so we're just standing still. We're at rest, and then the ball goes up, and we might go into a sprint. So we can see that oxygen demand went really high, really quickly. We're sprinting. This blue area this is our deficit. We can see that though that oxygen supply is starting to come up. It's trying to get there, but it takes time. So we're in a really, really big deficit there because that that demand's so high, our supply isn't meeting it. Now. Let's say this is the, so the demand's high. Then from this sprint, we've gone back to a slow jog. So the oxygen, the demand went down quickly. Now the supply you can see is actually above the demand there. Because we're trying to pay back, we're in that, that oxygen debt, that epoch, where we're trying to pay back this deficit. So if you imagine you did a full on sprint, then you went into a jog, your heart rate, things like that will be higher than they would be had we've just done that normal jog. That's because of that epoch. This might be a jog, this might be back down to walking levels. So the oxygen demand, it's almost at rest because we're walking, but our supply is still up. It's still above our normal supply at walking because of that, that big deficit there. We've had accumulation of metabolic byproducts, so we're keeping the oxygen supply um, higher to try and clear those out. So we've gone sprint, jog, walk, sprint again. Nature of the sport, we've gone into another sprint. So all of a sudden our oxygen supply, sorry, our oxygen demand gone up really high again. This is an all-out sprint. Straight away, that oxygen supply starts to come up. We're in that deficit again. We've increased intensity. We're going to go through a deficit. We're trying to get back. We can't get there. And then, maybe we've sprinted. We've gone to the bench by the looks of it. So the, the demand has dropped all the way back down to these resting levels. We can see that that supply, though, it's staying up. All of this blue area, that's our deficit. We're going to see all of these epochs, these oxygen debts going through there as we try to pay that back. So, um, deficit, oxygen deficit. Oxygen supply is not meeting oxygen demand. If we increase intensity, we go through a deficit. You'll see your heart rate is going up. The goal is to get back to steady state. We want to get our oxygen supply meeting that demand. That will put us in a steady state. That is good. And when we decrease intensity, we finish exercise, we have a rest, we're going to go through an epoch excess post-exercise oxygen consumption as we want to clear out any metabolic byproducts, those sort of things that we have uh, accumulated in our blood. Uh, that's it for today. Any questions on what we've covered, remember, send us a message with those. Fridays we do Q&As. We can reply to your messages through Instagram. We can um, get to that on Friday. If you want to see this with some data and some sports science equipment, if you go onto our YouTube channel, you will see uh, oxygen deficit, steady state, and EPOC on the treadmill with a VO2 mask on and taking blood lactate to look at what's happening with all of those things a little bit more in depth than what we've done today. So check that out. Otherwise, we'll see you later in the week.